Neanderthal man or pre-flood man? Secular science theorizes, but presents as fact, that Neanderthals were an extinct species or subspecies of archaic humans who lived in Eurasia until about 40,000 years ago. The theory goes on to proclaim that Neanderthals most likely went extinct due to breeding with modern humans, drastic climate change, disease, or a combination of these factors. This video will examine the evidence and refute the secular science narrative of Neanderthal man arguing that Neanderthals were not a subspecies of man, but were actually pre-flood human beings who existed before the great flood of Noah wiped out man and beast from the face of the earth, save those who were spared on Noah's Ark. Long before Homo sapiens began to populate the earth, another human species had established itself across much of the Eurasian continent, the Neanderthals. Fossils discovered during the last two centuries in the Atlantic Ocean and in Siberia have shed some light on these mysterious archaic humans. Secular science proclaims that Neanderthal man existed for 400,000 or so years, then somehow disappeared around 40,000 years ago. This is sheer evolution-minded storytelling at its core, without any verifiable scientific evidence to support that claim. Life upon Earth, including dinosaurs and man, did not exist until about 6,000 years ago. Neanderthals, or pre-flood man, did not simply disappear. They were wiped out by the flood of Noah. The descendants of the eight persons on the ark, who were Neanderthals, later devolved into modern man. Neanderthals managed to survive for some 300,000 years, and then they disappeared. How did they overcome existential threats such as extreme climate change? And what do Neanderthals and modern humans have in common? Secular science is not guided by the scriptures, but if it were, it would be far less prone to scientific error than it has been and currently is. 2 Peter 3, verse 3 through 5, condensed. Scoffers will come in the last days, saying, All things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Secular science, unguided by the scriptures, proclaims that the earth has always gone through seasonal climate changes and thus has come up with incorrect theories of arctic dinosaurs and the evolution of man. A well-regulated world temperature is a scripture verifiable hypothesis as to why many dinosaur bones have been found in Antarctica. Antarctica was not always the frigid frozen tundra continent we have today, as it was once a home to dinosaurs, as the fossil records confirm this. Genesis 1, verse 6 through 7, with interpretation. Then God said, Let there be a firmament, atmosphere, in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters above the atmosphere, from the waters below the atmosphere. Thus God made the firmament, atmosphere, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, atmosphere, from the waters which were above the firmament, atmosphere. And it was so. Paleoanthropologist Professor Chris Stringer of London's Natural History Museum specializes in the physical and anatomical development of early humans. The Neanderthal face is very different to the shape of a, a modern face, and many arguments about uh, how that face evolved and why it evolved. And I think the view now is that certainly that face, it's partly 
to do with cold adaptation. So we know Neanderthals evolved in conditions that were largely colder and drier than the present day in Europe. And it's likely that um, that face was particularly the nasal area, because the nose is very large and it's pulled forwards. It has a very large internal volume. So partly it seems that it's there as acting like a radiator. It's warming up and humidifying the air that's coming in. And this was true for all of these ancient humans. All of them really have larger nasal apparatus than modern humans do. But Neanderthals take it to another level. They, they really are pumping a huge amount of air through their noses. And they've got huge lungs, barrel chest. They need to oxygenate their blood. They're burning more energy to stay warm as well. Neanderthals, or pre-flood man, who existed before the flood of Noah, did not have to deal with extreme climate changes. The climate on Earth was well regulated throughout all the pre-flood world by the rings of water that encircled the Earth and regulated its temperature. These are the waters that were above the firmament, sky, before Elohim, God, rained those waters down upon the Earth during the great flood of Noah. The scriptures proclaim that seasonal weather came upon the earth after the great flood of Noah. Genesis 8, verse 22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. What do Neanderthals and modern humans have in common? Humanity. Acts 17 verse 26 and he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on all the face of the earth human speciate just as all life on earth does but no life form on earth has ever evolved into a different or higher kind of life form in order for evolutionists to get the general public to disbelieve in the creation account of Elohim, God, who formed the earth and created all life upon it in six days, they must first convince people that man has been evolving from lower forms of man, that man evolved from the ape, and then they tried to convince people that man ultimately evolved from single-celled organisms trying to prove anything. All I want to do is teach my students that man just wasn't planted here like a geranium in a flower pot. That life comes from a long miracle. It just didn't take seven days. Well, good morning, young ladies and gentlemen. For our science lesson for today, we will continue our discussion of Darwin's theory of the descent of man. Now, as I told you yesterday, Darwin's theory tells us that man evolved from a lower order of animals. From the first wiggly protozoa here in the sea, to the ape, and finally, to man. Abiogenesis theorizes that before the first simple life appeared, inorganic matter, prebiotic soup, came alive and emerged into the first simple organic life forms. All of these secular atheist theories, from Big Bang stellar evolution to planetary evolution to Darwinian molecules to man evolution, are refuted by the scripture account of creation and science's first two laws of thermodynamics. Long before Homo sapiens began to populate the Earth, another human species had established itself across much of the Eurasian continent, the Neanderthals.
Fossils discovered during the last two centuries in the Atlantic Ocean and in Siberia have shed some light on these mysterious archaic humans. They had culture, they had social systems, they had intelligence. Recent archaeological finds in England and France have helped researchers find out more about these early inhabitants of Eurasia. The brain case of Neanderthals is very different from that of anatomically modern humans, for example, a flat forehead and strong brow ridges, elongated flat skull. This is a robust male. He died at an age of 42 years. The shape of the brain is very typical and is unique under the fossils of the world. Neanderthals are human beings who lived during a different time period on Earth than modern humans, when Earth's atmospheric conditions were far more suitable for gigantism and sustaining longer lifespans. Earth's pre-flood atmospheric content was 35% compared to a 20% oxygen level today. Neanderthals were not archaic or inferior humans, humans who lived only to about 40 years old, but were pre-flood humans who lived past 900 years. Secular science proclaims Neanderthals lived up to about 40 years old. Scripture records that man lived to well over 900 years old before the great flood of Noah. Methuselah, at 969 years old, was the oldest recorded man to have ever lived. Genesis 5, verse 27. Genesis 6, verse 3. And Yahweh the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Modern humans have not evolved from pre-flood Neanderthal man, who lived well past 900 years old, but have instead devolved with a maximum lifespan of up to 120 years. Neanderthal skulls were larger and had a larger brain capacity than modern humans possess. Modern humans are not more evolved than Neanderthals, who were pre-flood human beings. Human paleontologists are blindly and dogmatically following evolution protocol when creating narratives about prehistoric bones that have been unearthed. The Devolution of Man an alternative theory to the evolution of man can be presented using a scientific approach with guidance from the scriptures. Based on the slightly larger skulls and extended brow ridges of Neanderthals, here is what can be surmised about these pre-flood human beings from the scriptural account along with a geological and forensic scientific viewpoint. In many secular, evolution-minded comparisons between Neanderthal skulls and modern human skulls, Neanderthal skulls are often shown as being tannish bronze in color, whereas modern human skulls look like they have been bleached white. This color scheming is done purposely to fool people into thinking that Neanderthal skulls are far more ancient than they actually are and that modern man has evolved from the darker, ape-like Neanderthals. Neanderthal skulls were larger than modern human skulls because pre-flood humans lived in a higher oxygen-rich content atmosphere, which caused larger growth and gigantism in many creatures, including mankind. Neanderthals' brains were larger than modern man's so they were fully capable of communication, toolmaking, hunting, cultural activities, and building, as many archaeological finds confirm this. 
Neanderthals were nomadic people who hunted large game, just like the American Plains Indians. As for the American Plains Indians, often the stereotypical images of very old, sun-scorched, wrinkled men are presented by racist, evolution-minded people in an attempt to portray Indians as less evolved human beings. American Indians are rarely ever shown in their youth, vibrance, and beauty. Neanderthals did not exist for 400,000 years as the secular science evolution narratives proclaim. Neanderthals were the original pre-flood human beings who existed for about 3,400 years until the great flood of Noah wiped out humanity. The word ark is contained in the word disembark. The descendants of the eight pre-flood Neanderthal human beings who disembarked from Noah's Ark devolved through microevolution and adapted to a new oxygen depleted atmospheric environment. Over the next few centuries, man's lifespan would be reduced from over 900 years to a maximum of 120 years. The extended brow ridges of Neanderthals are a result of a 700 to 900 plus year lifespan. Forensic science substantiates that the brow ridges of modern human beings grow a fraction of a centimeter every year during a person's life, just like tree ring growth. Modern human beings only live to a maximum of 120 years, and thus the elderly have notable but limited brow ridge extensions when compared to the young. Neanderthals, as pre-flood humans, could live past 900 years. During a 700 to 900 plus year lifespan, extended brow ridges would become a more notable, distinct feature of pre-flood humans as compared to modern man. Infant and juvenile Neanderthal skulls do not have the prominent brow ridges of fully aged, fully developed Neanderthal skulls. Forensically, this shows that the adult skulls, as with modern humans, acquired large brow ridges over a long lifespan. Neanderthals protruding brow ridges could not have grown as rapidly as they would have had to in order to reach the size that they attained over a short 40-year lifespan, as secular science claims. All men were created of one blood. Thus, all men are related. DNA testing of modern man shows that we still have Neanderthal DNA within us. Neanderthal man was pre-flood man. The lifespan decline and devolution of man is chronicled through the genealogies of the patriarchs in the scriptures. In Genesis chapter 5, pre-flood humans lived between 777 years and 969 years old. In Genesis 9 verse 29, Noah died at 950 years old. In Genesis chapter 11, men who lived after the flood are listed and their lifespans are recorded to have steadily declined from 600 years to 148 years old. In Genesis chapter 23, man's lifespan ranged from 175 years to 137 years old. In Genesis 25 verse 7, Abraham died at 175 years old. In Genesis 35 verse 28, Isaac died at 180 years old. In Genesis 47 verse 28, Jacob died at 147 years old. In Exodus 6, man's lifespan ranged from 137 years to 133 years old. In Numbers 33 verse 39, Aaron died at 123 years old. In Deuteronomy 
34, verse 7, Moses died at 120 years old. Noah and the other seven persons on the ark with him were all Neanderthals. Neanderthals did not disappear. After disembarking from the ark, man began to gradually devolve from Neanderthal to Denisovian to Cro-Magnon and all other variations of man and then to modern man. From the time of Noah to the time of Moses, man's lifespan decreased from 950 years to 120 years. Along with a change in man's lifespan from a high of 969 years to a new maximum lifespan of 120 years came a change in skull size as mankind micro-evolved and adapted to the new post-flood world environment. Skulls of modern-day human beings vary slightly between the different ethnic groups of man. Mankind is still capable of microevolution speciation and adaptation. Romans 1, verse 22 through 23 and verse 25. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. They exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. 2 Peter 3 verse 5 through 6 For this they willfully forget, that by the word of Elohim, God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. Man has microevolved devolved and adapted from the original creation of Adam and Eve. Man did not evolve from apes, nor a common ancestor of apes, nor long before that protozoans or amoebas. Mankind is mankind, apekind is apekind, and single-celled organisms are single-celled organisms. All life can microevolve but none can macroevolve and become another kind of creature. Scripture genealogy accounts, along with the geological and forensic scientific evidence, correlate, corroborate, and strongly support the hypothesis that Neanderthals were pre-flood humans whose descendants devolved into modern-day man after the global flood of Noah. Thank <laughs> you.